Hi, I'm Marin from Chanhassen Library, and I am going to share a little watercolor with you, some whimsical birds and flowers that you can paint. And this could be a project you could even do with a child. So to get started, I have my supplies here of a watercolor palette, um, a, a larger number of them. So it's nice to have a variety of colors. I have some brushes, the um, pointed brushes, and glass of water, clean water, my paper towels, and um, a little watercolor piece of watercolor paper cut to five by seven. This is just a tiny little project, doesn't need to be anything big. Um, but the most important thing I want to talk about that you're gonna need for the project is a Sharpie fine point pen, something that is permanent uh, because You'll be using watercolor with it and if it's not a permanent marker it's the black line is going to bleed from the water so you do want a permanent marker sharpies are easy to find and pick up so we're going to start out um I'll, I'll just show you the uh, final project so you have an idea of what we're going for um it is right here little whimsical birds and flowers so to get started we're going to put little round blobs of water on the paper and i always think even um, numbers are not as pleasing as using an odd number and I like things of varying heights so we're I'm gonna put on five dots of water fairly large so I'm getting my brush out and I'm gonna think about how I want them to go across the page well that one already got decided for me because it dripped on there which is fine and maybe I'm gonna start one over here for some balance. So I'm gonna get one over on my other side. And now I'm gonna get one maybe up a little higher and I want them spaced apart because I wanna be able to draw my stems in, uh, up to the flowers and the legs to the birds. So I need, uh, maybe I'll do one right over here and I'm trying to make a little bit different sizes of these uh, bits of water. And I'm going to put one more right down here in the middle, I think. Let's see what happens with that. Larger, smaller um, circles of water. So now I'm going to think about what colors I want to lay out on here. Um, bright Whimsical colors would be great. I kind of want to balance them out. So I think I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll start with purple over on this one. And I'm just going to blot it into that circle of water that I already put down and let it spread. And clean my brush off. And Oh, I do love this green, this nice bright green. And this is a, a time where you can just have fun with bright color. Oh, that's a nice blob. And I'm just gonna let it spread into that. Now I think a bright blue would be a lot of fun. So I'm coming over here to my blue and I'm just gonna put my water, dab it into the middle, let it spread out in that puddle of water. And now I think it'd be good to have a nice bright yellow here somewhere. I think I'll go with yellow over here. a nice little circle of that and maybe a bright orange I think would be fun to balance it all out orangey red here we go and just let it spread out 
into that water, puddle of water that we already made. So at this point, it would be best to set this aside and let it dry for several hours because you're gonna go back in and you can create more dimension with adding a layer of color on. Um, you're gonna put in the, um, you're gonna put in lines to create the shape of the little uh, flowers and birds in the stem. So I already have one pre-done. So we're just setting that aside and here's the one that's done. So I am going to come in with my smaller brush and try and make some dimension with these. I think I'm going to go this way. I think I'm going to put in some blue to create some shape on this blue green that I have. So I'm just going to come in and lay it around here. Uh, maybe I need the darker blue just to create some shape. I'm going to give a little water wash to it. There we go. That looks good. Um, probably I'll do a little bit of blue on this green too. Or maybe I should do a little darker green on there. That might be nice. just to the edge of it. Put a little wash around on there. I don't have a lot of color on the brush and I'm gonna come in with some water and just spread it out. There we go. So you can see how that creates some shape to that circle. I think I'm going to make this one into a flower. So I'm going to come in. I think um, it'd be fun to put a purple edge on that. Oh, maybe more than I wanted here. There we go. Here. And um, I'm going to make this a flower too. So I'm going to come in with a little orange. Maybe this orange would be good or darker. Yep. And create. Let me go around the edge so I can create dimension on that too. All right. Um, put some yellow in the middle of this one. Hmm. Uh, more blue. Give it a little more shape. There we go. All right, well, normally I would let this dry a little bit more, but I think it's dry enough to give you an idea of what we want to accomplish. I'm going to make this one into a flower. So to give it dimension, I'm going to go around the, uh, I'm going to outline that shape. And then draw my stem. I'm going to give it a little leaf. Another one on the other side. I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit more before I go in and do anything for the flower on it. Um, here I'm going to do around the outside. Make 
my stem. And I'm not gonna have these all just straight in a line to the end. I'm gonna do some varying heights. There. Now I'm gonna make these into little birds. And I think I'd like this one. I'm gonna make some very long legs on him. And they aren't gonna come down to the same point. I'm gonna put them a little bit different uh uneven like they're walking so and then here's a little foot and another little foot i think this guy i've already decided it's a little guy birdie i'm gonna put a couple legs coming down like this and his feet are going up like that because I'm gonna have him looking up into the sky, so I'm gonna give him a little beak. And this one, I think he's gonna look down. I'm not sure. That's what's fun about this. You can imagine what you wanna do. Maybe I'll have him go looking that way. I'm gonna put his legs coming down here. And another leg coming down here. Now I need to get an outline of ground these. And outline around this one. And Give this one. I think I want this one to be looking up in the sky like this. So oh, there's his beak and an eye. This one, his little eyes are right here. This guy, I think I'll have his beak coming like this. And an eye over here. Now they need some feathers. And I like the idea of some spiky things here. And a little tail feather here. And a tail feather here. And this one needs some feathers coming out this way. Boop. And maybe some on top of his head like that. All right. Still waiting for these to dry a little bit more before I go back in. Um, in fact, all of them, they probably need to dry a little bit more. So I think what I will do is just give you an idea. Um, I think I'll put a wing in here. And... Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do some dots and things to fill them in. This I'm going to put inside the flower. You can see it's still wet, so it's not drying very well, but I'm going to do some um, dots in there to give it a little dimension. So I'm going to get on another little brush. Just get a little bit of red on there. like their seeds in the center of the flower. And I think some little red dots on him would be fun too. And this one needs 
some little blue accents down at the bottom, I think. That's fun. And I think I'll put some dark, dark blue dots on him. Oh, maybe purple. Because <coughs> that shows up better. Let's see. I'm going to put in some yellow on the leaves. Or green, some yellow green, excuse me. And then we need some bright yellow for the beaks on the birds. Right here. So if I did not have a water uh, permanent marker, this black would be turning into gray blobs. So that's why it's really important to make sure you have that permanent marker. There. I kind of like how that's turning out there. I uh, Then I get to have some fun deciding what I want to do for these feathers. And I think a bright, Purple would be fun for this one. And um, green maybe on the other little. I'm thinking about complementary colors and how they work together. If you look at a color wheel, um, complementary colors, bright colors are fun to work with to make something really bright and, and whimsical, which is what we're going for here. So a blue and orange are complementary colors because they are across from each other on the color wheel. or blue and orange, I meant. This is kind of a yellow orange. And um, violet and yellow are across from each other on the color wheel. So it makes it very vibrant and whimsical. And that's why I'm going for that. Um, now I need to try and do something with this one. I'm gonna add some yellow to the center, hopefully to make that brighter there. It's still a little wet. And I'm gonna go in like, nah, my marker's still not gonna work because it's still too, it's still too wet. But I think what I do is go in and make a circle here, just like I did here, I'm gonna come back Yep, it still doesn't want to do it because it's wet. But you get the idea because I, I did it on this other one. I was able to put my marker in there after it had dried more. So that's the goal. And I want to have a little fun with this one. Make this a little more exciting so I think I'll put some purple dots in here and after it's dry I'll go back in and put the circle in and 
Now, um, to finish it off, I'm not gonna wait for it to dry, obviously, but if you want to have it look a little more grounded, you could put a little tiny bit of black on your brush. Make sure it's really watered down and put a little shadow in here to show that they're just kind of walking along, having a good time. All right. It doesn't have to be fancy, but that's just to ground them. And so that's basically it. And it's a lot of fun to do. You could have a child do this as well. Here's one that I did. Uh, I made them into little monsters, my little colored water blobs. And I think a kid could have a lot of fun with that. And also, I did this in a five by seven, so you could put it on a piece of cardstock and make it into a card to send to someone. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't have any particular books to recommend for this project, but do come into the library and check some out on watercolor and other techniques. Um, we also have the, our Libby app now that has magazines. So lots of a huge variety of magazines of, on crafts and all kinds of different subjects. And if you want to learn more about that, we do have information on the website at carverlib.org. So thank you, and I hope you give it a try. And if you want to share some of your efforts in the comments, we'd love that too. Thanks.